Hi, this is Andrew Jones at Climate Interactive. And a lot of people have been asking us lately about the climate impact of planting trees. So the purpose of this video will be to take you through how you can explore that question using the En-ROADS simulator. We're gonna show you the best graphs to use, the assumptions you can change, and some of the advanced features so that you can add some nuance to your exploration of this really challenging question about how much it's gonna really help the climate if we plant a lot of trees around the world. First, let's look and see what kind of graphs are the most helpful. Over on the left, I find that sources of net CO2 removals is the best. You really get to see what's happening over on the left with how much CO2 is being pulled out of the atmosphere every year through photosynthesis, putting that CO2 into biomass and into soils. Over on the right, you really get to see how much of a difference it makes relative to the, all the other greenhouse gas emissions with this stacked graph of all the greenhouse gases. So here we also have the energy CO2 emissions, F gases and methane and the others. And down here is land use CO2, afforestation removals will fit there. So just the basic levers that you can move, you can see over on the bottom right, here's afforestation, growing more trees in new areas. This is different from reducing emissions from deforestation which is the burning of trees, mostly for agricultural uh, uses. All right, here we're going to increase this. We can cr increase it up to medium growth rate of afforestation or a very high growth rate. Back down here to status quo. Best way to show it always is to turn it up, then go over here and hit this replay last change. And you can see how under the base scenario, those removals will jump up to about, what is that, about six gigatons a year by the end of the century. When you do that, look over on the right and you can see how these emissions from land use CO2, it's above zero, go to negative. So you actually have removals as this line goes below the zero line. It does take a while for the emissions to grow over time. It takes time to identify the land, to plant all the trees, and then for those trees to grow and only over time using photosynthesis pull CO2 out of the atmosphere until it reaches its peak out in the 2080s and 2090s. The removals uh, all happen out here. You can see how much it is by going to some important graphs. One really good one is to go into CO2 removals but net cumulative CO2 emissions. This is how much total CO2 has ever been emitted. And by 2000, it had been about 1400 since 18, uh, 1870, going all the way up to 2100. This number is, you see, 7858, and then you can go down and see what's the other number, which is 75, what is that, 7596. So you subtract the difference between the two, you can see how much CO2 was removed through these actions. As you test this, there's some interesting things that you might want to do. You go underneath the advanced view and see that you can start in different years, of course, that's easy to change. And you can change these assumptions of how long it takes. I'm gonna crank it up to its maximum and then we can explore, well, what if like some countries have done, they do it really, really fast. They don't find the land over 10 years, but they find it over five years. And you can see how the uh, removals start a little sooner. We also assumed it was gonna take time to, uh, after you find the land, to actually spread around the world and plant all these trees over 30 years. If you wanna be more optimistic, why not reduce it down to say 10 years? And then you could reduce this down, say down to five years. What that does is that means that there's more finding the land, there's more growth that's sooner, and the maximum goes higher, almost 10 gigatons per year. And then it starts falling off. Now that's interesting. Why is it that uh, it peaks and falls off? Well, a couple things are going on here. One of them is that these, uh, the trees are removing CO2 faster early in their lives and more of the trees are older out at the end of the century and so you don't have as much that are pulling out as, they, as it were 
pulling CO2 out, CO2 out as you did earlier. The other thing is that uh, trees decompose. Many die and decompose, and that returns some of the stored carbon back into the atmosphere. That decomposition rate and other assumptions are changeable here in the assumptions area. You go down to afforestation settings, and that percent loss per year of afforestation is at 2%. And as it describes here, that is lost annually um, through after the efforts from decomposition. The source for why it's 2% is there is from the IPCC. You could say, well, I think we're going to capture uh, more of it. We're going to make sure that we use the trees and replant really fast or something. You won't have as much decomposition. And that means that it'll be a little bit higher. So if you could reduce that down to 1% a year, for example. There are other important assumptions. We're assuming it takes 80 years overall for these trees to grow. If you want to assume faster growing trees, then you'll get faster growth. And that maximum is about 12, 15 gigatons. Um, you could also change how much land is available. The Baston et al. paper said, we're going to have 900 mega hectares. And actually, their maximum was really about this air, about 20 right here. Now you start seeing over on the right with some of these bigger assumptions, faster growing trees, less decomposition, uh, faster uh, diffusion of the planting of trees, and then also more land. Now mind you, 900 million hectares is the total land of China and the United States put together. Then you get some serious removals. See that uh, the green area is really large down here, going all the way down to negative 20. So what we've just created is the maximum of what was imagined in the range of possibilities in a paper that was done, or a study that was done by the Royal Society, where uh, they imagined 3 to 20 CO2 gigatons per year as a removals. So this t maximum of 20 is a lot. There's the maximum of what they could imagine. We could also, though, um, have a number that's closer to three. So there's the maximum of what the Royal Society thought was possible, which is removing a good bit of CO2, but it could also only be about as high as, well, three. So there we are, and you could create the minimum. So to capture an uncertainty range, you'd say, well, somewhere between here and this high level. Um, that's the overall range that you might imagine. But when you do this, the other important number to look at is, as I showed you earlier, the cumulative removed. So cumulative removed here is calculated either by hitting this button, which creates the data, and you can go put it into a clipboard and into Excel, or subtract that 7858, or from 7858, subtract 6912, and that's about the 750 gigatons removed over the century. And you'll see studies talk about how much could be removed over the century. That's the other calculation that you're going to want to check out. Um, overall, you can see many of the things that you're able to change. But I think you'll note that whatever the range is here, and I'm going to go back and show you again, whether it's the maximum that the Royal Society could imagine or closer to the minimum, as we've seen with other sliders, it's no silver bullet. It's not a silver bullet to addressing climate change. Instead, it's a silver buckshot that when you combine it with other actions, and you know the ones, if you've played with models of things that are really powerful when it comes to addressing climate change, that together with some other actions, um, we could actually see things come together to limit warming well below two degrees. It's not a silver bullet. It's part of silver buckshot. And we absolutely should do it, although its effect tends to be smaller than many people imagined before they tested it using a model that actually looked at the carbon cycle and the effect on the climate. So there's some guidance about how to use these levers and hope you find it useful.